myself. There you go. Okay. Okay. Welcome to the Citizens Grand Jury, Freedom Watch's Citizens Grand Jury. It's extremely important what we are deliberating on today. We have grand jurors on the line. Uh, their pictures are not being put up to be able to protect them. They have vowed to be fair. Uh, they have certified that they've never been convicted of a felony. They've been instructed to be fair. But this is an extremely important citizen's grand jury. And just to go back a little bit to refresh everybody's recollection, in 1992, the late great Justice Antonin Scalia, in a majority opinion of the Supreme Court, not that that rules what we do, because we go not just by the law of man, but the law of God, he found for the entire court that the grand jury belongs to the American people, not the three branches of government. We have to exercise the law ourselves as we did in the Old West before we had a Justice Department on July 1st, 1870, because we don't have a Justice Department anymore. It's a Department of Injustice. And this is a similar situation to what the American people faced in the days, months, and years leading up to July 4th, 1776, when the King of England, George III, took back our criminal justice system, took it back to the court of St. James, took it away from the colonies and imposed his rule of law with his yes men judges. They were yes men in those days. They didn't have women judges on the colonies. Today, we face a situation where if you're an elite person, if you're extremely wealthy or you're politically connected or a politician or even a judge, you're above the law. You have nothing to worry about in terms of law enforcement, by and large, unless you do something incredibly egregious. And even then, as we've seen with Hillary Clinton over the years, if, for instance, where many people disappeared during her administration and during uh, a proceeding dealing with Monica Lewinsky and other scandals, not even an investigation as to what happened to the 80 people who no longer are on this earth. That's not even making any accusations. No real investigation as to the death of Jeffrey Epstein covered up. And we know that Bill Clinton took about 25 trips on his plane to Fantasy Island or whatever they called it. And also other politicians participated in Epstein's Ill illegalities. This is where we are. I just cite that as a few examples. Another example would be Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, and James Biden. It's your Freedom Watch, which indicted them. It's your Freedom Watch which is trying them as we speak. And you can go up on our website at freedomwatchusa.org and watch that. We have excerpts and that's continuing. We're also prosecuting Dr. Anthony Fauci for negligent homicide resulting in the death of 6 million and counting worldwide. And federal judges who violated their oath of office who are throwing January 6 peaceful protesters in prison without even bail making them undergo forced confessions as if this was Iran, North Korea, or Cuba, are just a few examples. So today, we recommission our Citizens Grand Jury. I have some very proud Citizens Grand Jurors on the line today. If you wish to participate in future Grand Jury sessions, contact us at freedomwatchusa.org or my email at leclayman at gmail.com. We'll send you a questionnaire. We'll see if you qualify. We'd love to have you if you do qualify, because the American people need to mete out justice ourselves peacefully and legally. Unless we do that, we are headed into a violent revolution, which no one wants to see, no one wants to see anyone hurt in any way. Uh, and that's exactly why we're doing what we're doing, because we're trying to use peaceful and legal means to bring about justice. So today we're taking up for the first session, the indictment of President Joe Biden of FBI Director Christopher Wray and the Attorney General Merrick Garland for an alleged illegal and unconstitutional raid on the residence at Mar-a-Lago of President Donald Trump. There are many people out there and groups out there that are crowing about trying to get documents, affidavits, do this or that, but no one but Freedom Watch's Citizens Grand Juries is seeking to bring about justice here. And you can rest assured, 
if the past is a prologue, which it is, that nothing will happen with regard to any federal or state law enforcement to these alleged criminals who ordered an illegal and unconstitutional raid under the Fourth Amendment and other amendments, the First Amendment to quell free speech from Donald Trump. They're trying to kill his ability to run for president again. They want to have him convicted under the Presidential Records Act. You can bet they weren't just looking for records that he took that he's using to write his memoirs or for his library. They were looking for anything they could find to destroy President Trump. And today it's President Trump. Tomorrow it could be you. And in fact, go back and look at what happened to my clients, Cliven Bundy and his sons, Ammon, Ryan, Davey, and Mel, and others in that illegal uh, raid on their residence and their ranch at Bunkerville years ago. I, among others, defended the Bundys, and we succeeded in getting the indictment dismissed and it was held, upheld on appeal. And I want you all to remember what happened is that even after we got the indictment dismissed, where we caught the FBI line, the Bureau of Land Management line, the government lawyers, the US Attorney's Office in Nevada line, covering up exculpatory evidence. After all of that, it was the Trump Justice Department that took an appeal. It should have just been dropped at that point. Because even President Trump was not in control of his own Justice Department. His own Justice Department worked against him in large measure. And that's why the American people need to do it for ourselves. And we're not doing the citizen's grand jury for President Trump per se. He will benefit by it, but it wouldn't matter who it is. Because again, you cannot have a dictatorial tyrannical government busting into your home. That's exactly the reason why our founding fathers put in the Fourth Amendment. You can't have them taking your property, stealing your property, threatening you, over 20 FBI agents, Fortunately, President Trump was not there, but others were. Uh, I don't know whether some of his family was or not. But in any event, this is exactly the reason why our founding fathers fought the revolution or declared independence. They didn't seek a revolution, but King George declared it on them. And it's why they risked their lives, pledged their honor and fortunes to form the greatest nation ever formed. Unfortunately, today, that nation has been all but destroyed in just a year and a half with Joe Biden as president of this country. It was started before then. It wasn't just Biden. It was, it's been a downward slide. And we, the American people, must rise up. And the downward slide occurred under both Democrat and Republican administrations. To this day, what do you hear from the Republicans? You hear, oh, if we take Congress again, the House of Representatives will conduct hearings. Well, ironically, in the words of Hillary Clinton, which apply here but didn't apply to Benghazi, what difference does it make? Because when they get power, they've done nothing. They didn't balance the budget. They didn't reform Obamacare. They didn't give us the clarion call on what was going to happen in Afghanistan and Ukraine. They simply raised money and tried to get reelected. And when you see them on Fox News, they're smiling. They're happy about the state of the country because that will get them more money and they think return them to power in Congress, which again is more money. So we, the American people must do it for ourselves. And today we're gonna to begin, as I said, the process of taking evidence, a grand jury as Justice Scalia uh, ruled in that case, United States versus Williams, it doesn't have to be admissible evidence. You can indict on mere suspicion. You can indict on so-called evidence, which wouldn't have to be admissible even in court, because in the end, if there's an indictment, the defendants will have an opportunity to defend themselves. And in fact, that's what we're doing in trying Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and James Biden, and Fauci, that trial being underway. Again, you can watch an excerpt at freedomwatchusa.org, because we, the people, need to take action. And we gave all of those defendants notice that they were indicted. We gave them an opportunity to come and plead not guilty, guilty, no low contendery. They have no respect for the American people. They didn't show up. Then I'm giving them another opportunity. If and when we get convictions, and I'm confident that we will, they'll have another opportunity if they choose to respect us and come and argue why they're not guilty. You don't even get that in a court of law. 
once the judge or the jury has ruled. And this case is being tried by a citizen's judge because the defendants never showed up to ask for a jury. They waived the right to a jury. And then, of course, we will sentence and we will ask law enforcement and the military to carry it out peacefully and legally. Everything we do will be peaceful and legal. But it is quite interesting and important that in 40 states of this country, there is a right of citizen's arrest. When you know of someone who committed a felony or observe it, a citizen has a right to arrest that person and turn them over to law enforcement. Even in the state of California, that's the law, the left, most left-leaning of all states. It's statutory. Some states, it's common law by tradition, by practice. So let's get rolling. I'm going to ask my assistant, Asher Anderson, to play uh, some of the information and evidence that we're putting in front of the court. We're obviously going to have live testimony as well, documentary testimony. Today, we're going to start it with video of those who have observed what's going on with regard to President Joe Biden and his department which has, in my opinion, become the Department of Injustice working against the American people, notwithstanding taking actions to try to destroy President Trump so he can no longer run for president again and to destroy his family in the process. So let's roll the videotape, as they say, Mr. Anderson, and let's let this grand jury begin. Next week, uh, we will conclude the presentation of so-called evidence and other information and we will ask you for an indictment. Uh, you will choose a foreman or a person to sign it. Uh, we will then give notice if we get the indictment uh, that they have been indicted, they can come and plead innocent, not guilty or no low contendery. And then we will be off to a trial. The American people must rise up. And let me make one other comment before we go further. Did a big talk about the so-called affidavit that went behind the, the search warrant, which was obviously fraudulent as the pretext to raid President Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago. Much information, many groups want to claim success here. The media wants to claim success. That's good for fundraising, but the fact is this affidavit, anything of substance, ain't going to see the light of day. And why is that? Because the magistrate who's presiding over this matter, Bruce Reinhardt, is compromised, he's corrupt. I've been in front of him twice with regard to Laura Loomer, with Dr. Jerome Corsi. He's texted out hateful uh, texts about President Trump. It's no accident that the Justice Department and its FBI went to him to sign this warrant. And although he said he was going to uh, consider redactions and releasing it just a few days later, he said, well, of course, it may be redacted so much that it'll be worthless, suggesting that he may not release it at all. But if it is ever released, and there'll be probably appeals and all kinds of things that delay everything, it'll be worthless. And that's what we've seen for the last many decades, a charade of a legal system, a corrupt legal system. There is no profession in this country, regrettably, and I'm a lawyer, nearly 45 years, more corrupt than the legal profession at the government level and at the level of the federal courts. So let's roll the videotape, Mr. Anderson. This is the one chance for the American people to get justice about what happened at Mar-a-Lago. No comment. 24 hours after the unprecedented raid on a former US president, the people responsible won't talk. They won't tell us what they took, why they took it or what they're doing with it. This came straight from the top. Everybody knows it, but now they want to play dumb. President Biden, what's in the Attorney General Garland to tell you about the Trump raid? Uh, it would not be appropriate for us to comment on any ongoing investigations. Again, we're just not going to comment on, on any ongoing investigations from here. Again, we defer uh, any incoming on this particular uh, incident yesterday to the Department of Justice. Again, I'm, I'm just not going to comment on um, any reaction to, uh, to what happened yesterday. We are going to refer any incoming to the Department of Justice. I don't have anything more. Joe Biden campaigned on uniting the country and then raided his predecessor's house with guns and has nothing to say about that. 
Where's the attorney general? Where's the FBI director? You can't just break into a president's safe and then go silent. We need answers. Biden's now divided the country in a way that can't be repaired. This is unforgivable. Here are some answers we need. Why'd they shop the warrant to a judge involved with Jeffrey Epstein? The judge is an Obama donor. He's a magistrate judge, Bruce Reinhardt, who helped Epstein's associates get off. Why is this being done out of a DC situation instead of Florida? Because the guy who's running the FBI field office cooked up the fake Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot, huh? These documents they seized from President Trump weren't even under subpoena. So why'd they go in so hard? Hillary smashed iPhones with hammers and poured acid over 30,000 emails under subpoena. The FBI never raided her house in Chappaqua. They came over and had lunch and handed out immunity deals like candy. There's a mountain of hard evidence that the Biden family was involved in a massive international pay-to-pay scheme with our biggest enemies, Russia and China. Hunter was getting bribed with diamonds. Joe's supposed to be getting kickbacks from communists. There's pictures, voicemails, banking records. But the FBI buried that to get Joe in the White House. Oh, and then there's the Pelosi family that has a better stock trading record than Warren Buffett. Let me repeat, Nancy plays the market better than Warren Buffett, and she's not being investigated for insider trading? Sandy Berger stole documents from the National Archive, stuffed it in his pants. They didn't raid his house. Two CIA directors, John Deutsch and Dave Petraeus, were caught with documents in their homes. They didn't get raided. FBI Director James Comey took documents to his house and leaked it. They didn't raid him. Democrats can get away with murder because their families have been controlling D.C. for decades. But if you challenge them like Trump did, you're done. Oh, never knock down the door of one of their own. Trump promised to drain the swamp, gets raided. The left celebrating like this is the best sex they ever had. Watch. This has never been done before in the history of this country. He would not have authorized it unless they believed they had uh, significant evidence that a crime uh, has, had been committed. This is a night where you are going to remember where you were. This is such a historic day. If it's that kind of information, you could see why Lisa Monica and Merrick Garland would take swift and decisive action. That's all the sort of, I'd say, good news. These are bloodthirsty savages who want to see you humiliated and violated. This is a threat to anybody who opposes them. Look what we can do to you. We can even storm into your president's home and take whatever we want, and he can't do anything about it. Even Trump's most dedicated haters aren't comfortable with this type of action. Andrew Cuomo said, DOJ must immediately explain the reason for its raid. It must be more than a search for inconsequential archives or it will be viewed as a political tactic and undermine any future credible investigation and legitimacy of January 6th investigations. And not everybody in the media is on board with these tactics. Watch. This, I'm hoping, goes beyond simply not complying with some archiving laws or DOJ just handed Donald Trump the Republican nominee and potentially the presidency. If it's seen as some sort of massive overreach and not something incredibly serious, this is a very good day for Donald Trump. To send this kind of FBI team to the former president's home, there has to be something more than just a Presidential Records Act violation. This does step on Democrats' victory lap a little bit. As far as what Republicans are saying, they think that this is going to be very good for Republicans. Biden's political terrorist attack against the candidate he's about to face off against shows Joe knows he can't win fair. Sending 30 men in with guns to get pieces of paper because the National Archives was complaining that getting stuff back from Mar-a-Lago was taking too long. It's like a librarian launching an FBI raid. We're raiding a president over bookkeeping. Trump's team was already working with the feds and already handed over boxes of documents this year. Just this summer, agents were in Mar-a-Lago. Trump's lawyers were showing them around. This is where this was. This is where this was. The Fed said, all right, keep it secure. The next thing you know, boom, they come back with safe crackers, telling Trump's lawyers not to watch and hauling off 10 boxes of docs. 
The Wall Street Journal is reporting the documents included President Obama's private letter that he left for the incoming President Trump in the drawer of the Resolute Desk in the Oval, you know, a presidential tradition that goes back decades. This was the, the letter given to me by President Obama. I won't show it to you, read it to you, but a, a just a, uh, a beautiful letter. Is there a beautiful line you can letter. share that, that struck you most? And there were numerous lines, so well written, so thoughtful. Men with guns showed up for that. A personal letter between two presidents? The Wall Street Journal is also reporting one of the documents that was also seized was Trump's private correspondence with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. And I was really being tough, and so was he. And we would go back and forth, and then we fell in love, okay? No, really, he wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters. We fell in love. But you know what? Now they'll make, they'll say, Donald Trump said they fell in love. How horrible, how horrible is that? They could have easily negotiated the return of documents like that without guns and warrants. What the FBI is probably doing is planning evidence, which is what they did during the Russia hoax. We also have a hunch they doctored evidence to get the warrant. Again, what they did during the Russia hoax. So this is a big fishing expedition using anything they can against Trump to take him out of the race for 2024. Or just hang this dark cloud over his head like they did with the Mueller investigation. Remember, they knew for two years there was no crime, but they tried to frame the president for obstructing a crime he didn't commit. They crossed a very serious line with this, and they're never coming back. And everybody involved in this needs to be prosecuted for misconduct, disbarred, and have their pensions stripped. And that's just the beginning. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and okay, Mr. Anderson, play the next presentation. All right, just a few seconds. Fox News alert, after 72 hours of silence, Attorney General Merrick Garland came out of hiding and confessed that he okayed the raid. There are, however, certain points I want you to know. First, I personally approved the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. Garland may have pulled the trigger, but he got the go-ahead from Joe. How do we know? Biden told aides he wanted Trump prosecuted. Quote, Mr. Biden confided to his inner circle that he believed former President Donald Trump was a threat to democracy and should be prosecuted. He has said privately that he wanted Mr. Garland to act less like a ponderous judge and more like a prosecutor who's willing to take decisive action over the events of January 6th. Garland got the message and did what the big guy wanted. But the raid was a replay of the Mueller investigation. Remember when Trump handed over thousands and thousands of documents showed the special counsel everything, and they still tried to charge him with it, obstructing a crime that he didn't commit? The same thing happened this summer. Trump's team cooperated. It was friendly. They handed over boxes that the liberal librarian wanted over at the archive. But the Fed still slapped Trump with a subpoena in June, and Trump kept cooperating. A team flew down to Mar-a-Lago. Trump's lawyers showed them what was in boxes. They said, whatever you're looking for, here, just take it. They all had a nice lunch by the pool, probably. Trump poked his head in at one point and said, hey, guys, whatever you need, have at it. No problems. The Fed said, OK, just keep this stuff secured in here and told them to throw an extra lock on it real tight. And they did. They threw some extra locks on the room. Everything seemed fine. You know how lawyers are. It's always a process. You know, they bill by the hour. And some of this stuff wasn't even documents. It was like golf balls and Oval Office raincoats. You know, Trump's a memento guy. You've seen inside his office, there's a lot of clutter, memorabilia. Trump's team thought they'd give him everything they asked for. But the next thing you know, 30 guys show up with guns and want to look in Melania's closet. What changed? The department does not take such a decision lightly. Where possible, it is standard practice to seek less intrusive means 
as an alternative to a search and to narrowly scope any search that is undertaken. The search was narrow. Three dozen dudes spent 12 hours in your house, 12 hours. I mean, I know it's a big house, but if they knew what they were looking for and they had just been there a couple of weeks before, why'd they turn the place inside out? Why are you snooping through the first lady's walk-in closet? Do you think Trump's hiding classified documents in Melania's clothes when he has a safe downstairs? Oh yeah, and they cracked the safe open too and it was empty. How dumb does that look? And then they say they had a mole on the inside and the mole told them where Trump was hiding documents. So why did the search take all day? Well, either the mole's an idiot or the mole doesn't exist. This was just a fishing expedition to dig up anything they could use to hurt the guy with. I mean, they might charge him with something. They obviously want to charge him or they wouldn't have gone in so heavy. If they found out what they wanted, why'd they wait three days to talk about it? Why'd Garland show up 45 minutes late to his own press conference? Did they have to wait for Joe to go on vacation with Hunter so he doesn't have to answer any questions? What a middle finger to America, by the way. You raid your opponent's house and then fly to the beach with your crooked son while your impish attorney general covers up your family's crimes and dirties up your political enemy? But Garland, no, 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 he says this isn't political at all. They'd raid the home of any president over bad bookkeeping. Upholding the rule of law means applying the law evenly without fear or favor. Under my watch, that is precisely what the Justice Department is doing. All Americans are entitled to the even-handed application of the law, to due process of the law, and to the presumption of innocence. When has Trump ever been presumed innocent? I mean, the man's never been convicted of a crime in his life, but he's been wiretapped and raided more than any politician in history. Hillary had four years of classified docs at her house. She didn't get raided. Due process. They judge shot to a guy that hates Trump so much, he had to recuse himself from a Trump case because he admitted he couldn't be fair. That's the judge that signed off on the warrant. Applying the law evenly, both Trump's lawyers had their homes raided. His campaign manager had his home raided. His advisor had his home raided. His other advisor was illegally wiretapped. His other advisor was shackled and strip searched. Can you guys name a Democrat that that's happened to? No, just one. Can you name one Democrat that any of that's happened to? They better have had more than cocktail napkins and dinner menus and love letters from Little Rocket Man. I don't want to hear they found some small ball piece of paper like a memo about Madagascar. The attorney general has to use discretion, right? When you come at the king, you best not miss. Grammatically incorrectly. Carlin better find the nuclear football in there, or this thing is a major scandal. He says, we're going to file a motion and make the warrant public. So what? What does that prove? You guys cook up phony warrants all the time. What's that going to tell us? We need to see what you thought Trump had, and we need to see what you got. And how are we supposed to trust you? I mean, after you've been caught planning evidence and rigging investigations for years on the guy. We're trusting the same guys that framed them the last time around? I mean, look at Rudy. They raided Rudy's house, took six computers, all of his phones, and a year later, they never charged him. They said, all right, that's a, what's, we're good. What? The strategy is basically raid first, ask questions later. Or on second thought, don't ask questions. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to- right, let's, let's continue and, and let's not make any comments during this, this proceeding with regard to the grand jurors or otherwise, so they can fairly determine what to do when I present the indictment. Uh, next, next video. All right, two seconds. Let us bring in Fox News contributor and former Wisconsin Congressman Sean Duffy. Sean, in light of that report, how the heck can the White House, Joe Biden claimed they knew nothing about this raid and the information that led up to it? Well, we all know that, that, as the White House was saying, hey, listen, we knew nothing about the raid. 
all of us knew that that didn't pass the smell test. Of course they were going to know that if the FBI and the DOJ are going to raid a former president's home, this is highly political. It's never happened before. And Joe Biden and his allies in the White House are, of course, going to sign off on it. So, um, again, I think this new revelation indicates, of, of, of course, he was involved. Of course, they knew. Um, and, again, you can't lie to the American people. Well, he, can. he can, but we're going to find yeah. out. Right? <laughs> you can, but we'll find out. Uh, the National Archives discovered apparently more than 700 pages of classified documents at Trump's home in January, and that is now being seen as possible justification for going into Trump's home and raiding it. Is it? Well, Donald Trump says, well, I declassified these documents mm. when I took them with me, and I had a standing order. So, no, they weren't. But by the way, you came to my home uh, in June. You took the 700 documents. Okay. Well, if you thought there were more there, why didn't you just come back down and, and take the rest of the documents yeah. that you thought I had that were, were, were classified? The process actually worked in June. Why wouldn't it work in August? Um, I think this was a predicate to go in and search his whole house. And when you look at the breadth of the warrant, which we've discussed earlier, I mean, it was, you can search everywhere for basically anything um, in Trump's home. And so uh, the, 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 the way they did this tells me they were looking for something other than classified documents. This was about, you know, whether it was, you know, documents that Trump had that were going to go to a civil suit against the DNC, Hillary Clinton, and uh, former FBI employees, or it could have gone to January 6th. But um, this was such a historic search, the breadth of the warrant um, made no sense just to go back and get some more documents that you say were classified when you could have done what you did in June. Um, why wouldn't you do that in August? Doesn't make sense to me. Sean, there's also this, uh, it's a Wisconsin school board story. We actually have two, but this one, uh, the Kettle Moraine School Board in Wisconsin voted in favor of banning all religious and political symbols in classrooms. That includes So that one, that one is that, and then- uh, That'll be another uh, grand jury. Go ahead, uh, next video, please. All right. is in their court to remove some of this because this sort of speculation hanging on over this nation can't be good. Well, that's what really highlights what we don't know. TSSCI is a very high classification. If there was classified material in the president, the former president's possession, he was not allowed to have that material after he left the presidency. And the government has every right to retrieve that material. But there are a lot of questions, not just about the status of the material, but the knowledge of the former president. And then you have all of these leaks that are being attributed to the Justice Department. And that's one of the reasons why it's not an easy thing for an attorney general to order the release of an affidavit. But this is a unique, historic moment. And whether for good or for bad, uh, this raid has caused a great deal of concern among citizens, in fact, a belief among many, that this is just an, another targeting of Donald Trump. That hurts the entire legal system, not just the Justice Department, FBI. It really undermines the rule of law. And so this is an occasion where the, the attorney general needs to go against what I think is his personal inclination and to say, release it, release the affidavit, Let's show what there is here. Now, by the way, the Department of Justice could just say, uh, just shrug and say, we got the documents back. We're going to be giving some back to him, but we achieved our purpose. If that's the case, we might never see, or it might not, we, we, we actually might uh, never see the affidavit itself. But there are crimes being alleged in this. Uh, in this uh, affidavit and in the warrant against a former president of the United States. And that person is the expected opponent of the current president of the United States. It is ridiculous to ignore the troubling aspects of that 
that situation. And I think Attorney General Garland's got to do much, much more than the type of boilerplate statement that he made yesterday. Shannon, I mentioned a, a, a Donald Trump tweet. Uh, former President Trump also added that they could have had any, at any time uh, this information they wanted, and it, uh, it includes long ago. He says all they had to do with that was ask. But there's another part to this. The bigger problem is what they are going what they are going to do with the 33 million pages of documents, many of which are classified that President Obama took to Chicago earlier uh, today. Martha played a, 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 a three sound bites together of James Comey on the information that Hillary Clinton had on her server. And he concluded that uh, it was extreme carelessness in handling top secret information, but added, we cannot find a, a reason, a case for bringing criminal charges on her, despite the fact that it was extremely careless and she did have these top secret documents. So we're, are, are, we, are we looking at a different sort of legal precedent here? I think that the optics of this are very difficult for the FBI and the DOJ. And all of us on this panel will remember when this was going on with the former Secretary of State, she was allowed to go in on a weekend with her lawyers, go in and talk to the FBI. It was not recorded. It was handled in a way that a lot of people thought was different than most people would be in facing these questions. And it's the optics of this, especially as Professor Turley has pointed out, that are going to be really difficult for the DOJ, for the Attorney General, for the FBI, because people see this and perceive there's a difference in the way that these treated, uh, these cases were treated, that people were treated, that um, it, it, it gets to the dangerous place of worrying about partisan perception or politics entering into these institutions that as Americans, we don't ever want to have to doubt them. Uh, but people can easily point to these other cases that were very high profile and say, how come the treatment has been so different? I mean, there are political ramifications of this. Um, and it's naive to think that this would have been done in a low key way, that Newsweek reporting, which again, um, you know, we don't know about the sourcing on it, but it, it points points to senior DOJ officials and says they thought they could do this in a low key way. Um, I don't know how anyone thinks that you can carry out a raid on a former president's house <laughs> in a warrant that's based on criminal federal criminal statutes right. and think that it's going to go under the radar. Right. Or, or why this sense of urgency? Why stop negotiating? Uh, why not issue another subpoena? Uh, you know, again, take ex ex extraordinary care to show the public that we made sure this was the absolute only way we could do this. Uh, and so far, they haven't been able to do that. And, and Katie, I, I, I want to ask you, because there's a general feeling that all of this was a, just a pretext, the, the National Archives and now some of the information coming out, to seek additional information, particularly maybe to aid with the J6 committee, which feels like it's losing a lot of its steam. Well, of course, that's the suspicion. I don't think that the DOJ is going to be sloppy enough to not make some case that the warrant was based on what they're claiming it is, which is these classified documents. And if in the course of searching those areas, they come across evidence that helps another case for the January 6 allegations, then they can, in fact, use that if the search was executed properly. So I don't think we'll ever really get an answer to that in terms of is this a pretext? Probably. I mean, I'm sure they're hoping that they come across other information that's helpful. I wouldn't be surprised by that. But I think that this warrant signed off by the judge does allege a crime that's not related to January 6th issues. But again, this is very political. It's incredibly political. Merrick Garland did nothing to quell any concerns that this is some unique justification for doing this to a former president. And again, I go back to my point that any comparisons to other government individuals, even at the highest levels, right. Possessing classified information is not comparable to the president or a former president of the United States. Jonathan, uh, yesterday uh, there were reports the White House had no idea that uh, uh, A.G. Garland was going to have that press conference. The White House had no idea about the raid. When should we expect to hear the White House really seriously chime in on this? <laughs> I don't expect any time soon. This is one of those occasions where the advantage to be out of the loop, although they appear to be in the minority, given all these leaks from the Justice Department uh, to major media about every aspect of this uh, case. It seems like the White House is the only people who are not getting uh, insider information. But, you know, this is obviously kryptonite for uh, the Biden administration because of the optics that we have discussed. But they need to come forward, I'm talking about the Justice Department, and really show an airtight and undeniable case presented in front of that magistrate. Uh, the, anything that is short of that 
is going to fulfill the narrative of critics of the Justice Department. This could not be more serious, not just for Donald Trump, as I said, for the justice system itself. And Merrick Garland seems to be absent without leave on this. I was surprised by his statement uh, yesterday. He talked about one aspect outside of uh, the documents with regard to his approval. He didn't swat down the uh, suggestions this could be a pretext for January 6th. He didn't address some of these other sort of procedural or scheduling uh, issues. Now, he is someone who is known not to be inclined to reveal information, but he's the Attorney General of the United States who just ordered a, a raid on the former president's home and the very likely opponent of the current president. There is no way you could reproduce that in any past historical event. He's, he's really in unknown territory, and he has to do better than to simply say, trust us, we're the government. Yeah. Thank you, uh, team, very much. That, that was fantastic, and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. And again, Shannon, congratulations. So I want to Brian. And Mr. Anderson, play the next presentation. And at the end, I'll sum it all up. Now, joining us now with more is the attorney for former President Donald Trump, Alina Haba, is with us, along with Fox News legal analyst Greg Janet, uh, Jarrett is with us. Alina, let me, let me go to this very important question of how Hillary was treated how Sandy Berger was treated. Uh, let's talk about that February letter that they got from the National Archives and Record Administration. And let's talk about what happened in June, because it seems like they were saying in writing that Donald Trump was cooperating. Apparently, he cooperated in June just before this raid happened recently. Uh, so what changed in the interim? That's an incredibly good question. So first of all, what's the difference between uh, Hillary and the predecessors, well, it's very simple. Uh, Donald Trump is a Republican. He's leading in the polls, and that is a problem for Joe Biden and anybody that's going to be running against him if he chooses to run in, for 2024. Um, that's the answer to that question. If he was a registered Democrat, this wouldn't have happened. For um, as far as Ms. Wall's letter, it states very clearly that she was told by counsel to President Biden, again, like you said, misinformation. They said they didn't know. But counsel to the president said that he deferred to Ms. Wall and that she could then decide to just remove the privilege that every president prior has had. Um, so that's the issue there. Um, as to what happened in between June and August, well, we know what happened. This was an event that was prime right before election. It is prime because he's way ahead in the polls. And the Wall Street Journal's headline today stated it perfectly clearly. This was an improper search. It was not done correctly. There was no need for it. And he was cooperating. There is absolutely no reason, no reason. And now we have evidence of that, that they were cooperating. Greg Jarrett, the night of the raid at Mar-a-Lago, you were on this very program, and you pointed out what the Wall Street Journal mentioned today, and that is that the Federal Records Act gives authority to a former president to have custody and control over presidential papers. I want you to talk about that and add to that the right of a president to declassify documents as he sees fit, which, by the way, is not something that, say, a secretary of state like Hillary Clinton could do. Well, and the other difference is that there was overwhelming evidence of intent on Hillary Clinton's part. And the statutes that she violated and should have been prosecuted under uh, used terms like knowingly and uh, intentionally and deliberately. Well, she certainly did that. But here with President Trump, presidents don't pack up their boxes in the Oval Office. They're not allowed to. It's by law that's done by the GSA. Uh, does anybody think that when he got down to Mar-a-Lago, he sat in a room for weeks on end or months on end going through boxes and papers? No, of course not. And he cannot be held vicariously culpable under the law for the actions of his staff or auditors or, or lawyers. But the important part I, point I made to you the night of, of the raid is that the Presidential Records Act is the controlling statute. It gives him a measure of control and custody and possession and access. And of course, these two constitutional scholars in today's Wall Street Journal made the exact same point. Merrick Garland 
knew all of that. Uh, there's no enforcement provision under the Records Act. It's not a crime. So what did Merrick Garland do? He tossed in three general criminal statutes. Well, wait a minute. Uh, under law for more than 100 years in America, a specific statute like the Records Act takes precedent and supersedes any general statutes. And again, Garland knew that, but he wanted to gain access to Trump's compound for an ulterior motive, to look for some evidence, any evidence of a different crime, maybe something related to January 6th. So he tossed out a general warrant, which is a clear violation of the Fourth Amendment, which requires it to be specific. This wasn't. And the magistrate should never have signed it. And I bet he has a bit of buyer's remorse now, which is probably the reason why he wants to divulge the contents of the affidavit, because maybe that shows not only lies and misrepresentations, uh, but omissions about how the president had actually been cooperating and how a subpoena should have been used instead of a warrant. It's going to be very interesting to watch unfold. Alina, thank you. Greg Jarrett, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube. Yeah, I think that's the last one. Yep. Let's put this all in context. We see a raid on the president's residence in Mar-a-Lago. This is a violation not just of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution against unreasonable searches and seizures. And I might add, that gave rise to other amendments too, the Second Amendment, right to bear arms, right to commission militias, because this is what was going on in the colonies by King George III, exactly the same thing, probably less sinister than what we've just seen with regard to Donald Trump. It's a violation of the Fifth Amendment. The president didn't have due process to argue against doing this. It was done under cover of, in effect, darkness in a way, the 14th Amendment also creates due process rights. And of course, the First Amendment, that's the right of free speech and to assemble. Uh, and it would implicate his running for the presidency. They're trying to destroy his advocacy in terms of running for the presidency again. With regard to the Presidential Records Act, the fact is he had the right to declassify and he had the right to have the documents. As it was pointed out, Obama has millions and millions of documents and he didn't have his home rated. And then, of course, there's Hillary Clinton, who used a private email server. I represented uh, the parents of Ty Woods and Sean Smith, who died with Ambassador Christopher Stevens at Benghazi. It was Comey himself who admitted that several foreign adversaries, powers, had access to Hillary Clinton's server and her emails. And that is most likely what gave rise to them knowing the coordinates of where Ambassador Stevens was at Benghazi in Libya, resulting in the death of the sons of my parents. And what happened when I filed a lawsuit? It was assigned allegedly randomly, but in that court, it wouldn't matter because every single judge in that court, in the US court, uh, District Court for the District of Columbia is either compromised or corrupt. And you can get my book, It Takes a Counter Revolution, and read about that. The judge dismissed the case. And when did she dismiss it? It was Amy Berman Jackson, a highly politicized Obama appointee. He dismissed it on the eve of Memorial Day to stick a dagger in the hearts of my gold star parent clients. This is our legal system today. And this is why we must rise up. And it's why we must take matters into our own peaceful and legal hands. It is why I will be presenting you with an indictment next week to consider, as well as additional, quote, evidence and information that you can act upon. Much of what you saw in these videos were admissions by Attorney General Merrick Garland, by FBI Director Ray. We actually didn't show that tape, but it, we'll show it next time where he's crying about threats to the FBI. Well, no, you shouldn't threaten FBI agents. But then again, we know how my clients have been threatened in the past, including the Bundys. We know what, how they were treated by the FBI. He had no problem with that, of course. Everybody should be treated equally. But the magistrate, and he's not a judge, he's a magistrate, Bruce Reinhardt. You know, I, he looked like Pinocchio to me. I guess he's lied so many times, his nose got so big 
that it barely fits on his face. But the reality is that this guy is vehemently anti-Trump. And Trump's lawyers, and this is just gr gratuitous advice for anyone who happens to watch this citizen's grand jury, should be moving to disqualify this magistrate. That being said, we will reconvene next week. Uh, we will present more evidence to the grand jurors. We will present an indictment to you. Uh, we will ask you to return it. Uh, you'll be able to have input into it. We thank you for your participation. You are heroic in doing this. Uh, we're not showing your pictures up on the screen just to protect you because of the political climate these days. It, there's a danger here. And this is why we need to protect you as well as the American people. But at the, when it comes out in the wash, when the American people finally wake up, title of my book, It Takes a Counter Revolution, Wake Up America, you can get it at freedomwatchusa.org. When American people finally wake up, we will take our legal system back. We will prevent bloodshed. We will do it peacefully and legally, and we'll throw these criminals out. Uh, and you can also see on our website at freedomwatchusa.org, our, our Third Continental Congress, where we have been convening to declare independence again, to form a new government, not a new nation, to make certain changes, uh, or at least clarifications, putting it into our constitution, that federal government officials like Merrick Garland, AG, Attorney General, FBI Director Christopher Wray, and the rest do not have immunity. And that's why they think they can get away with this, because they claim immunity. They really don't. When they violate constitutional rights, even under man-made law, they lose that immunity. But of course, the fellow judges will protect them. And that is why we, the American people, must let the judges and others do as they wish. Uh, but we will do what we need to do, because we don't answer to anyone but God. God bless you. We'll be back next week with a continuation of this Citizens Grand Jury. Thank you for your participation. Stay safe and remember the Father and Son will only help us if we help ourselves.